What's going on guys and welcome back for another Madden 23 Atlanta Falcons franchise gameplay. For those of you who are new to the channel man, go ahead and do me a huge favor, hit that subscribe button. I post a lot of franchise gameplays here on the channel. I would hate for you guys to miss out on a single episode. But for those of you who have been following this Falcons franchise for a while now, as you guys already know, we are in week number four and we're getting ready to match up with our rivals, the New Orleans Saints. But in last week's game, our Falcons were victorious. We ended up taking on another division rival. That was the Carolina Panthers. We ended up winning that game by a score of 38 to 21. If you missed out on that game, make sure you do yourself a favor. It will be up in the cards above. Go ahead, click the link, enjoy that video. And don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed that video. But anyways, moving forward with week number four, before we talk about our matchup with the Saints, we actually have a double breakout. Our first two breakouts of the season, and they're both for, for a defensive back. Now, the only person that I could potentially think that one of these is for is A.J. Terrell. As you see, he ended up winning Player of the Week honors in Week number three for his performance. Two interceptions, and he ended up housing one of them for a touchdown. I definitely think that one of these is for him. Who I think the second one is for, I'm not really sure. So let's go ahead and click the button to see. And just as I assume, A.J. Terrell has a chance to go for his X-Factor abilities. He already is a superstar. He's like Babe Ruth calling his shot. So if we get just three interceptions, force fumbles, tackle for losses, or just hold the Saints to less than 100 yards passing, or just force three turnovers in general, A.J. Terrell will be a X-Factor, which will be really cool. It could be really helpful for our team. I mean, not sure how much that would really help with him having an X-Factor. But now we also have Jalen Hawkins, and I'm not going to lie, man, this is a breakout that's kind of pissing me off. If you guys remember from last season, season number two of this franchise, or season one of this Falcons franchise, we actually ended up having a breakout scenario for Jalen Hawkins already. We got him all the way up to star dev, and then dude ended up regressing in the offseason. I don't understand that, so he regressed all the way back to normal dev, so... Yet again, here's another breakout scenario with us trying to take Jalen Hawkins from normal dev to star dev. But I'm not going to lie, man. If we're not able to get this uh, breakout, I'm more, more, I'm more focused on trying to get the win up against the Saints. Because, again, we got swept by the Saints last year. And we were, were in a pretty good position to take the division. And we just couldn't beat the Saints. That was our Achilles heel, the one team that we just could not get past. So... At the end of the day, I would love to have a brand new superstar and a brand new X Factor on the team. But more importantly, I would love to be 4-0. I would love to say that I finally beat the Saints. But anyway, speaking about the Saints, let's go ahead and see what they have. No more Jameis Winston starting here. It's going to be Max Duggan going to be the starting quarterback, a new rookie that the Saints ended up drafting last season. Alvin Kamara is still here, though. We know what kind of problems he gives us, as well as Chris Olave and Michael Thomas. We unfortunately know all too well about those two guys, as last season they were known for just bagging on all of my quarterbacks or really anybody in my secondary. Checking out their defense, Cameron Hayward or Cameron, Cameron Jordan is still on this team. He's their sack and tackle for loss leader. I'm surprised he did not retire. Marcus Mays and Tyron Matthew are the interception leaders. But enough of the talking. Let's go ahead and get to the field and take on the Saints. We are down on the Live from the Superdome as these two division rivals get ready to do battle. Both the Falcons and the Saints come into today's game with a record of 3-0, but only one team will remain unbeaten after this game. If we go off of what franchise history tells us, the Saints should have no problem in this game as last season they were able to 2-0 sweep the Falcons in the regular season or on their way to a NFC South division title. They will start with the ball here first down and 10 from the 18-yard line. Handoff goes to Alvin Kamara who is known as the Falcon killer as both of those last two games when we played against the Saints, Alvin Kamara had huge gains on the ground. Second and eight, that pass is going to be incomplete looking for his tight end but Duggan was not on the same page. Leads to a third down to eight from the 20 yard line Duggan looking to throw again blitz picked up pretty well and that allows him the time to find Michael Thomas down the field makes the catches across midfield across the 40 trying to weave his way through the secondary and Michael Thomas able to flip field position and now the Saints have possession of the ball in Falcons territory handoff on first down and 10 goes to Alvin Kamara he's able to turn that into a gain of five yards down to the 24 yard line pistol formation now on second down and short it's going to be a handoff to Alvin Kamara who has blockers out in front of him look at him go breaking tackles all the way down to the 12 yard line before he's brought down under center here on first down and 10 is Duggan with Kamara his running back it's going to be another handoff to Alvin Kamara but this time the Falcons defense is able to get to him before he's able to do too much damage Saints show passing formation here on second down to eight Max Duggan back to throw and that ball is going to be intercepted by the rookie Emmanuel Forbes gets his first interception of the season and I don't know where Duggan was throwing that one just clearly threw it behind his intended receiver but the Falcons take over possession of the ball here first down and 
and 10 from the 11-yard line. Handoff goes to Cordell Patterson trying to get the edge. Unable to, but still able to get a nice gain of 7 yards to the 18-yard line. Second down and short here for Desmond Ritter. Looking to throw. Looking for Justin Ross. And he had it in his hands, but a big hit there from Davis able to knock that ball free. It's third down and short, and the Falcons are in danger of giving the ball right back to the Saints after forcing a nice turnover. You can't do that. we got to convert off of these turnovers. The snaps away. Wide open is Kyle Pitts in the middle of the field. Our bit reliable tight end who still is only showing star dev. We're working on that, man. We're trying to figure out why EA just hates him so much. And look at Jalen Hyatt with a step on Flowers. And that ball's going to fall incomplete. Shout out to that pressure there from the Saints because if it wasn't for that pressure, the old Desmond Ritter had himself a dot. And on second down and 10, the pressure in his face, yeah, that definitely caused him to throw the ball away. Definitely felt like we were about to be sacked. It leads to a third down and 22 from the 23-yard line. Ritter looking for anything downfield, feeling the pressure late, and ends up completing that pass underneath to Justin Ross, which is a nice completion, but just does not have enough for a first down. And on fourth down and 14, we're going to have to surrender the ball back to the Saints. And I just hate the fact that we had a turnover forced by our defense and our offense was just unable to get anything going off it. Nothing to show for it. And look at Alvin Kamara showing his strength as he's across midfield, dancing in the secondary. He's going to be finally brought down across the midfield mark at the 43-yard line into Falcons territory after one play. First and 10 looking to throw after the interception is Duggan going for his tight end. And that one's going to be overthrown, incomplete. Second down and 10 from the 43-yard line. Duggan back to throw again. Going downfield for the tight end. That passes caught for the moment then he gets flipped and landed on his back definitely going to drop the ball after that third down and 10 Duggan throwing yet again going deep down fields for Nolas and oh my goodness look at Nolas Malik Nolas into the end zone for a Saints touchdown what is up with these receivers that the Saints end up getting and what is up with the kicker ends up shaking that one left bounces it off of both uprights and I believe the crossbar as well but my gosh, man, clearly this rookie receiver has been listening to Chris Olave and the OG Michael Thomas himself as he just took a page out of both their books. First down here for the Falcons looking to answer the touchdown. Put up on the board, and oh, Desmond Ritter got away with almost throwing the ball right back to the Saints. It's now second down and 10. Handoff goes to the rookie. Jalen Hyatt gets the first down, has the sideline, breaks one tackle there. Unfortunately, he steps out of bounds at the 44-yard line. Huge gain to 25 yards, leads to a first down from the 44-yard line. Ritter feeling the pressure there from Cameron Jordan. Try to run away from him and say, yeah, you're not getting me. We're throwing that one away. Second down to 10. Ritter drops back to throw. Pressure in his face yet again. Looking for Hyatt, but just not on the same page with the rookie. Kind of threw that one behind him. At least a third down and 10. We need a conversion because we don't want to give them the ball back. Going for Drake London. And look at him making a nice catch across the middle of the field. Keeping this drive alive as he gets down to the 41-yard line. Handoff goes to Cordell Patterson, who has some nice blockers out in front of him. Cordell Patterson has the first down as he's finally brought down at the 28-yard line. First snap of the second quarter, Desmond Ritter's actually going to call his own number. Breaks a tackle there on the read option. He has the first down inside the 10. Posting a Debo puts a huge hit on him at the 4-yard line, but Desmond Ritter holds onto the ball and puts the Falcons in a first down and goal situation. Handoff goes to Cordell Patterson. He ends up losing 5 yards back to the 9-yard line. Second down and goal. It's going to be another handoff here to Cordell Patterson trying to get something going and finds nothing as he can continues to go backwards now to the 10 yard line third down and goal Ritter looking to throw under pressure that pass is going to be complete to Kyle Pitts in the end zone for the first touchdown of the day for the Atlanta Falcons answering the touchdown put up on the board by the Saints and Young Way Koo is actually going to knock that one through the uprights and give us a one point lead Oh, I definitely feel like we just stole a touchdown there from the Saints. Shout out to that red zone threat ability of Kyle Pitts. I think that definitely helped him bring that pass in. It's now first down and 10 for the Saints. Back on the field trying to see if they can end another drive in a touchdown. And that's going to be a first down handoff for seven yards by Alvin Kamara. Second down and three. Duckin looking to throw. Has time in the pocket and just overthrows his wide receiver slash running back Alvin Kamara out of the backfield. Leads to a third down and three. Here comes the blitz. Duggan standing strong in the pocket. Ends up finding Chris Olave, who makes a nice move as he gets blasted at the 48-yard line, but enough for another first down. This rookie is actually standing strong in the pocket. That's not an easy feat with all the pressure that we're sending his way. And look at him going back for Alvin Kamara, but this time beautiful coverage, able to break that up. Leads to a second down and 10 from the 48-yard line. Duggan steps up in the pocket, and no, oh, another interception he gets away with. Remember, we already have one 
we just need two more interceptions and AJ Terrell will be an X factor. He doesn't even have to be the one to get the interceptions. But man, did we just drop one there? As a, speaking of drops, the tight end had that one in his hands. But shout out to our secondary able to cause that pass breakup. Speaking of pass breakups, I wish that they were part of the X factor thing. I feel like if we had the pass breakup situations, oh what a punt there from the Saints, pins us back to the two yard line. That would also help us with getting these X factors or superstar stuff. First down and ten, handoff goes to Cordell Patterson. A nice move there. Able to turn that into a gain of five yard gets us a little bit of breathing room off of our own goal line. Back to the ground attack here on second down to five. Cordell Patterson is loose. He's into the secondary with one man to beat. And oh, a touchdown saving tackle there from Tyron Matthew drags him down at the 35 yard line. Otherwise, Cordell Patterson will probably still be running right now. First and 10 from the 35 under center is Desmond Ritter. He drops back to throw. Finding Jalen Hyatt wide open there on the drag. Gets a nice gain of nine yards up to the 43-yard line. Two-minute warning approaching here in the second quarter. And we want to end this drive in the end zone, but again... We don't want to leave too much time on the clock here, so we'll take it to the two-minute warning here. First down and 10 from the 46-yard line. Under center still. Play action fake this time to Cordell Patterson. And Desmond Ritter doesn't see anything. Rolls out to his right and decides to take off with it late. Gets a gain of a yard there. Leads to second down and nine from the 47-yard line. And Desmond Ritter is going to make some changes here at the line of scrimmage. Snaps away. Ritter standing strong in the pocket. Firing for Justin Ross. He has him. Justin Ross breaking two tackles. Look at him go. As, oh. Oh, he unfortunately steps out of bounds, but at least he does pick up the first down to the 43-yard line. But man, if our guys could just keep their feet in bounds, there was so much more running room as we're going to take a shot to the end zone for Jalen Hyatt. And that was probably a shot that should not have been taken. Don't get me wrong. Hyatt is a good receiver. I'm just saying that Marshawn Lattimore is a better defender as, oh my goodness, Drake London showing that he's just the better receiver no matter how many guys you put on him. Had three guys on him and still made the catch. First and 10, taking a shot for the the end zone for Kyle Pitts is going to be intercepted by Marcus Mays, but there was a flag on the play. It looked like we had a free play, and it was a free play. Offsides on Demario Davis gives us the ball with first down and five from the 14-yard line. Under a minute here, Cordell Patterson just had nowhere to go as he stopped behind the line of scrimmage there, losing four yards. It's now second down and nine with 35 seconds left. Ritter firing to the end zone and wide open as Kyle Pitts. A perfectly placed ball there from Desmond Ritter finds Kyle Pitts in the back of the end zone and the extra point kick here from Young way Koo is going to be up and good the Falcons have a seven point lead over the Saints now with just 32 seconds left in this game and now the pressure is just on our off our defense really I should say to just close this game out we have the lead just keep them out the end zone keep everything in front of you and for the love of God try your best not to let these guys go up top and just moss you and Duggan's trying it right here with Chris, Chris Olave and he does just that to Casey Hayward Chris Olave is gone 75 yards into the end zone how, how do you defend this type of stuff, man? I'm backed off into cover four and still nothing as Duggan's going for two and he's going to get nothing as he's going for Michael Thomas and Richie Grant steps in front of that and gets the interception. And technically speaking now, that's twice that we've intercepted Max Duggan. Does, do those extra point interceptions like lead do those count towards like x factors if they don't i honestly think that they should first down and 10 we hand the ball off here to jalen hyatt as we're just going to go ahead and be happy with taking a two-point lead into the halftime break you know i mean i wanted it to be seven or eight i think it was eight that we had but you know things just happen and look at desmond ritter trying to dance around to see if he can make something happen here and we probably should have gotten down because we don't want to have desmond ritter go off with an injury granted we do have marcus mariota on the bench I would rather use Desmond Ritter than I would Marcus Mariota. Just saying, preferably, just different folks, different strokes. That's just my thing. But now we get the ball with already having a two-point lead. It's very important that we get into the end zone on this drive. I, I mean end zone. No field goals. I don't want to have a five-point lead. I still don't want to give the ball back to the Falcons with a chance to take the lead with a touchdown. I want them to be down by multiple, multiple scores, and we're going to get in the end zone to do just that. Second down of seven, handoff goes to Cordell Pass and turns that into a nice gain of five. Gets us to the 33-yard line. Third down and short, handoff goes to Jalen Hyatt, who's searching for some running room. Couldn't find any. And on fourth down and two, we're going to have no choice but to punt the ball back here to the Saints and give them a chance to take the lead and just rely on our defense. 
I mean, a little bit of timid play calling there, you can say. I mean, I did decide to go run heavy more. If you guys haven't noticed already, I did end up switching the playbook with the Atlanta Falcons. We're now using the 49ers playbook, and that playbook has a lot of read options and a whole bunch of other stuff, so I'm thinking that this would be better with this offense. We're just still a work in progress before we figure out the exact scheme that we want to use with them. Second down and short is going to be converted as Kamara ends up getting that one up to the 43 or 44 yard line. First and 10 here for Max Duggan. Looking to take another shot downfield. Looking for Michael Thomas. And oh my gosh, two defenders on him. And Michael Thomas just goes up top. Do you see what I'm saying, man? This happens every time I play the Saints. There's nothing I can do to stop these guys from going up top on us. I had two defenders back there. I even have the setting set to play ball, so I go for the SWAT now. I don't even bother jumping with these guys because it's pointless, man. It just doesn't work. I get bagged on every single time. First down, we end up completing that pass underneath to Kyle Pitts, who's able to only turn that into a gain of a yard on the play. Second down to nine here for Desmond Ritter, looking to put this ball in the air. Has time in the pocket, ends up finding Justin Ross in the middle for the conversion up to the 42 yard line before he's finally brought down. First down yet again, keeping this moving Desmond Ritter dropping way back and ends up finding Justin Ross yet again across the middle of the field on the slant route this time able to get the ball down across midfield to the other opposite 44 yard line inside of Saints territory trying to set up the screen this time to Cordell Patterson gets away from the defensive lineman trying to chase him down look at Cordell Patterson go as he tiptoes the sideline is finally brought down at the 27 yard line and this possession is looking a lot better as Desmond Ritter is finding wide open receivers all over the field the second down to seven now from the 24 four yard line Ritter looking to throw yet again going for the end zone for Drake London this time he's unable to bring that one in in the double coverage I mean yeah you catch it in triple coverage but double coverage nah man I can't do double that's it's not enough pressure third down to seven here looking for a conversion is Desmond Ritter stepping up in the pocket and look who's open the rookie Jalen Hyatt making a, the biggest catch of his career, the biggest catch in this rivalry so far. Handoff on first down and goal goes to Cordell Patterson. He muscles his way all the way down to the two-yard line on a gain of six yards. Second down and goal. We're going to go hurry up offense here. Desmond Ritter back in the shotgun formation, flipping the play up of the line of scrimmage, making sure that we get Cameron Jordan blocked because if anybody's going to blow this play up, it will be him. It's going to be a handoff here to Cordero. He spins his way into the end zone, and the Falcons take the lead right Right back from the Saints. Look at Cordell Patterson strutting his stuff. We're going to go for two, though, here just to see if we can make it a field goal game. And we got hit as we released that ball. Probably a good thing that it hit the ground. Definitely a good thing that we were not able to get that pass off because looking back at it now, it looks like we were about to throw an interception, and we definitely don't want to have a pick two happening in this situation. We're already up one in this game. First down and 10 here from the 17. Kamara gets his number called. He's powering his way forward yet again. Alvin, Alvin Kamara gained five yards on first down to the 22 yard line Duggan is going to call his own number here on second down and five extending his way for that first down marker but he's going to be stopped just two yards shy it's third down and short here to start the fourth quarter Max Duggan back to throw and down goes Duggan couldn't find anybody to throw that ball to and Graham gets to him for a sack losing five yards on the play and the Saints are going to have to punt this ball right back to the Falcons Already with a one-point lead, can we now get into the end zone and put more pressure on this Saints offense? First down and 10 from the 43-yard line. It's going to be a handoff here to Jalen Hyde, who finds a crease. Hits the sideline. One man to beat. Jurtles past him. He's going to be finally brought down at the 32-yard line. What a play there from Jalen Hyde. I got to find a way to get this rookie involved, and I feel like this offense, the scheme that I'm working with right now, is definitely going to be the go-to offense for him. Inside the red zone here on first down and 10. Desmond Ritter is going to hand the ball off to Cordero Patterson who tries to break this one to the sideline. He's trying, had one leg held there by Tyron Matthew. He's going to be stopped after a gain of only four yards on the play. Second down and six here for Desmond Ritter looking to throw. And that pass is going to be complete to Drake London inside the five, brought down at the four yard line. Ritter's under center here on first down and goal, trying to set up the screen here to Kyle Pitts. And again, man, I'm in a new offense, just trying to get tricky just to see what we can do. And Desmond Ritter tries to take off with this one on second down and goal. And he gets very close to getting into the end zone. Just one yard away. It's third down and goal. And move it a little bit closer now. It was, we're basically third down and inches away from getting into the end zone as the Saints go off sides. Back to the goal line formation here on the half yard line. And Desmond Ritter calls his own number, punching it into the end zone. And it's going to be off sides on Demario Davis again. But this time we're going to decline that penalty as we got into the end zone. And that extra point field goal by Young Way Koo is going to be up and good. We definitely 
debated with the idea of going for the two-point conversion to make it a two-score game. But going back to that failed two-point conversion try that the Saints had, I just felt like, you know what, if you're going to be able to get the ball in the end zone, I want to see what you can do with the two-point conversion to take the, uh, to tie this game up. It's now second down to 19 after Duggan got sacked. He drops back to throw again, leaves the pocket to his right, being pressured again, and makes a smart decision and throws that ball away. But now they're sitting with third down to 19 from the 16-yard line. Duggan drops back. He steps up in the pocket looking for something downfield. He fires one downfield for Chris Olave. And surprise, surprise, he comes down with it at the nine-yard line. There's just nothing you can do with these big receivers, man. They're going to go up top and make these catches over us every single time, no matter if we go for the swat or the pick. I guess we're just in better position to make the tackle. Second down a goal from the six-yard line. Handoff goes to Alvin Kamara, breaks the tackle there, and gets his way into the end zone. And now the Saints have to go for the two-point conversion to tie this game up. Two-point conversion underway from the two-yard line, and Duggan's going to be under center. Drops back to throw, dancing around. He's going to be intercepted again by Casey Hayward, and that's going to be the third interception. So technically speaking, we should be an X-factor with A.J. Terrell. We've already intercepted him twice. One of them was, I guess, technically in the field of play or whatever, but those other two were on two-point conversions. Both of them were intercepted. Now it's up to our offense to close this game out for us. One first down is all we need, and it's GG's for the Saints as they call their first timeout. Second down to eight, Ritter drops back to throw under pressure, but ends up finding Justin Ross across the middle of the field, makes the catch, but does not have the first down. Third down a short from the 32-yard line, Ritter drops back to throw. Here comes the pressure, hit as he released it, and that pass is going to be complete to Cordell Patterson, who's off to the races. He's going to sit down at the 40-yard line, and that's going to do it right there. Come out in the victory formation now, and it's going to be GG's for the Saints. They are going to call their final time out there on first down and I don't know why but I just felt like the math wasn't going to add up correctly so I just go ahead and run one more play get the first down and now we'll come out in victory formation I don't know maybe my math just wasn't mathing right but I thought that um, there still could have been an opportunity for the Saints to get the ball back so I just wanted to make sure everything was good to go there we needed it out and we have finally finally defeated our division rivals the Saints this is the first time out of three attempts against them that we've gotten the win so leave a like on the video if you guys enjoyed make sure you subscribe for more Falcons franchise gameplays and I will catch you guys in the next one